All right, well, cheers, everyone. Cheers. Welcome to the show. And this one is going to be a little bit different. Usually we're looking forward to things new and innovative coming up. And this time we're actually doing a little reminiscing and we're gonna look back. Yeah, sorry, we're gonna look back at a show. It's a pilot show that I did back in 2003. It's called Gustav and Friends. And uh, really it's a precursor to what we do here on Undercover Jet Setter, because when I look back on it, I was like, wow, that's kind of what we were trying to do, except it is a different show, but it's a, it is a food and wine show. Yes. And it was a talk show. And uh, as you're gonna see here, we're gonna show you good portions of that show in this show here. And we're here at Spadini mm -hmm. at the JW Marriott. Hence the reminiscing. With Gustav, and he's the Gustav of Gustav and Friends, Gustav uh, Mahler, who is our master chef friend. Uh, and then also you're gonna see that my co-host was Romy Rosemont, <laughs> actress who you've seen on Glee, and our special guest was Brian Cranston before he was Walter White. Right, during the Malcolm in the Middle days, before so, he was on Broadway too. So let's take a look at the beginning of that show. Now for a talk show with taste, it's Gustav and Friends with your hosts, John Daly and Romy Rosemont and featuring certified master chef, Gustav Muller. I think that's it with you in the kitchen. I think that's it. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Tonight's dinner guest, Brian Cranston. You know him as Hal, the lovable loser dad on the Fox sitcom Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> And when I go out to a restaurant, I almost always order fish because there's so many different kinds and different textures and different flavors. And, you know, I'm tired of chicken, I'm tired of beef, and, and I want something different. Ostrich? Ostrich is different. Yes, okay. Yeah, I've never heard of that fish before. But, but that is not a fish, no. no. But so that's what I usually go for, and, and, and I like to try different kinds and have a nice glass of white wine with that. I'm with you on that. Gustav, what do you got for us? I think this, uh, this should be something easy for us to do. Uh, I just um, haven't had a great idea for... Um, I just was able to, to receive some wonderful fresh um, the sea bass and a uh, rock shrimp. The rock shrimp is sweet, wonderful, fresh. They're, they're fabulous in addition. I create this sweet corn risotto and a little bit of that shrimp in there. It's just, just wonderful. It's just mm -hmm. it's fabulous. Will, that, you, will you marry me? I was going to say. <laughs> hold it, hold it. I was going to say, chair. are you crying? Are you crying? <laughs> Maybe. He brought a little tears on. But the, uh, the shrimp, I just were able to, to get some. They're absolutely fabulous. A great addition to this dish. It's really, really nice. Uh, the only question I have now is that uh, why are you still sitting here? I'm getting up and cooking. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Cheers. Here's to Gustav yes, and friends. Cheers. Cheers. Thank okay. you. All right, Gustav, thank you. Well, you don't really sip a tequila. Don't worry about that, man. I want to tell you something. You look fantastic in spandex. You like that? Yeah. You like that? Yeah, how, much, yeah. how much surgery was done before that? No, no you know, Jane, Jane Kaczmarek, bless her heart, she asked me, she said, I had no idea that race walkers, professional race walkers, wore those kind of is helmets. There, I mean... <laughs> we said, Jane, this is, all, this is all just stuff that, you know, that looks funny. That's Are there professional race walkers? Or is, could I have another one of these? <laughs> Well, there might be a professional race walkers association, but I'm not aware of it. No, we just, we just, you look, what's funny, that's that tight spandex as if you were one of the, you know, they got it from uh, Eric Hyden, you know, the, the speed oh, skaters yeah. that type of thing, <laughs> with the hat and all, and then we just added a bicycle hat with a swoop and all, I mean, it's ridiculous. But it was, it was funny. It was perfectly anyway. how. Yeah. Well, or, or perfectly Brian, because from what I understand, you do wear that in your off time. Well. No, you I don't know. want to give away every secret. Yeah, and hello. Now, how much does Taylor want to have Hal as her father as opposed to Brian Cranston? Hal is, uh, Hal, he, he's so goofy. He's, he's a sweetheart, but he's, he would probably break down emotionally before he would be able to pick up the glove and play catch. <laughs> He'd go, a cow died for this glove. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and... <laughs> <laughs> Brian just says, yeah, thanks, cow. Here we go. Play catch. So you don't cry? At don't cry. I'm a man. Okay. No, no. Uh, you know, uh, at the appropriate time. Which is like in, in an episode of Ally McBeal, maybe? No. Well, that's, you're dating yourself. <laughs> <That's laughs> yeah. No, we don't. She has to date herself. She's not married. So, yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. Sorry. Wow. sorry. Did you see what happened there? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yes, okay. I turned it around well, to you. you know, biting. Biting people, commentary. People are actually getting married later, and being that I'm 21, which is, I'm legally 
because I thought I said another one. <laughs> wow, the service. Yeah, it's coming. Slow. It's coming. Don't worry. Yes. But thank you. That was a good comment, though. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's really. So, wait, how do you two? Actually, Brian and I go back. Dated. I, we dated. We dated back. 1984 went, went right through, I, uh, through the nose. So I would hardly say that being in the same prison cell is dating, but you know, if you want to call but it We did that. know each other. Yes, there's no doubt about it. 1984, when you were on Loving. Talk yeah. About yeah, we have a mutual friend, John O'Hurley, and uh, John, oh, who wonderful. I grew up with, and introduced me to Brian. Brian yeah. and I became friends with him. Yeah. That's it? 20 years ago. Well, John. That's we all? Don't, we don't, we don't that's all I like you may not have noticed, but the majority of Undercover Jet Setter is shot on the iPhone. So that means you can create your own TV show, or you may want to have great vacation videos. Well, we've made it easier for you with our book. It's called The TV Studio In Your Hand. It is a quick read, and you can get it here. So bring us along for your next vacation video or your new TV show. You know, that is so funny, I and mean, it's fascinating to see Brian on his pre-Walter White days. <laughs> yeah, and what's really interesting is that he was going to be a cop, and you got to hear this story coming up that he talks about when he was a security guard in a store. You know, I went to college to be a cop. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I went, I yeah. went, I was going to be a policeman, and I, and I was, my major was administration of justice. And it was all set, and I was doing really well in it. And then my counselor said, you know what? I was, gonna, I was at a junior college, going to transfer to a, a, a four-year college. And then he said, you know, you really need to round out your curriculum here. It's, you, you need some, some uh, liberal arts classes or something. And so I thought, I looked at the big board, and acting was up there. And I, did, I had done a couple commercials when I was a kid, about eight years old. And I thought, well, acting, I, I, that was always fun. And I got into acting class, and this was in the early 70s. And I, re I realized, and I'm a little embarrassed to say this, yeah, come on. but the girls in acting classes were far prettier than the ones in police science classes. And so my life course was guided toward the beauty of, of actresses as opposed to the now, general. Now, here's what's interesting. If you had just gone down the list, art history has a lot of beautiful women in it, too. So you could have been an art historian. I c you know, yes. Easily. A poor one, but yes, I could true. have been. <laughs> right, but yeah. he knows paint by numbers better than right. anybody I know. Look at number seven, behind number, number seven. seven. Blends with eight. Yes, no blends with eight. We call it Sienna. <laughs> Reminds me of a date I once had. Burnt you know. Sienna. Burnt Sienna. Like the Crayola. Mm. Yeah. Who came up with those? Burnt, burnt Sienna. Sienna. Which is a funny, by the way, it's a funny color. Burnt it is a Sienna. Funny. You use, you yeah. bring up Burnt Sienna, you're going to get a You're going to get a laugh. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's yeah. like, isn't K's funny? K's. Yeah. And the word toast. <laughs> See? It, it's just kind of fun. I, I failed to see the sense of humor in that. Okay. Oh, so, you're so, so And guns? I I'm clean. Were you shooting? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we uh, trained and, in all that, yeah. But didn't you, didn't you have a security guard job? And I then they was, offered you well, a gun and you said... Yes, when I was going to college, I, uh, I was the guy in the window at the grocery store, looking through the two-way mirror, <laughs> looking down at people stealing no. things. I swear the to eyes God. in the sky. Yeah, I the was that guy. The rats in the rafters, because mm -hmm. I know And I would that. have, there would be a microphone next to there, and whenever I saw someone steal something, and once there was, there was a woman who took a steak about this long and shoved it down her pants, and as she's walking out, she's, she's dripping. And it was, <laughs> oh, the, no! It, well, well, she wasn't. It was the steak. I know, but still. And it was sad. Like, it was like, she's taking, stealing Did you find steak. out if it was a tenderloin? It was, it was uh, USDA. <laughs> or a London broil. It was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or a rump. Yeah, well, <laughs> Look at that. No, it was down the front. Do it. But I got more. She, and my code was, if there, there was a front door and a back door, and I would say, Ray, coffee's on in the back. If, and at the moment I said that, the assistant manager or manager would look to the back door and see whoever was walking out at that point, he would go out and detain them. And I'd come down the stairs, and I'd say, you have a steak down the front of your pants. It's an old story, but pull it out, you know. There was a guy who once took about 12 dog leashes. Now, why would you, st if you're going to, and rolled them up and stuck them in his jacket, and, you know, and I mean, it was ridiculous, but I was the guy, you know, and, and then I got I'm, a job. I was caught by one of you people. Really? For the bulk bin. Oh, did you? The bulk yeah. bin? Yeah. Oh, I know that. You recovered raisins. Yeah. You, you got caught? You got caught? I got then? caught, and I had bought $100 worth of groceries. I was like 16 years old, and all of a sudden, I'm paying for the $100 worth of groceries, but I had all the yogurt. You were covered raisins. Oh, see, I And it? it was 
in my mouth. You're making me nervous now so, because I always do that. But like, yes, but like I was literally like at the cash, excuse me, and I was 16 years old. Could you come with me? Uh, detained? Oh detained. no. Like was getting in my parents like Ford or Mercedes oh. and without, I just bought him like, a what? He was like, I saw what you had, the yogurt and almonds on island four. I was like, what? <laughs> Really? Who was uh, this, Barney Fife? Was, or I some, swear to you, it was like... Well, I'll tell you right now, it was like you got some almonds in your mouth. <laughs> I don't know, why don't you spit them out. Go ahead. <laughs> That's what you know, I literally what? said. I was like, I'll pay for them. Do you want me to get on the scale? And I have, I have I'll give them back to you. Hi, folks. I helped pioneer reality TV back in the 1990s, and now we are pioneering in the 21st century new media. Our travel TV show is shot and edited on the iPhone, and we deliver it to you on Tiki Live in HD. We can reach bigger audiences around the world compared to the 3 million nightly viewers I used to get. Plus, Tiki Live makes it easy for our viewers to find us. Tiki Live is on every continent. And Tiki Live is in all the leading smart TV technologies. If you're looking for a cable alternative or you want to start your own TV show on your terms, check out Tiki Live. That was a pretty good Barney Fife, and, and Brian does have a lot of good impersonations. <laughs> well, and I, I know he also produced a film back in the early days and uh, had his mom say a naughty word. Take a look. He's got a film. He's going to put his mother in the film, and he's going to make her say a nasty word. Oh. Really? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I have... You're having your mother say yeah, a naughty? <laughs> I, I had a, an idea. I, I wrote and directed a film called Last Chance that's, that's out. It it It'll went. be coming out soon. It'll be coming out soon. Uh, I'll go opening weekend, I swear. Will you? I'll give you eight fifty, ten bucks right now. I need okay. To I need to, come on. That'll be the first, yeah, that'll yeah, be the first money. Yeah. Do you have any cash? Yeah, I got plenty. And I thought now. about... <laughs> no, I thought about writing this thing, and, and just it, it's, it's like a, a rebellious teenager thinking, I'd hire my mother to say the one nasty word in the movie. I can't say it. No. It it's not the four-letter word. It's a seven-letter word that begins with A. Oh, I like it. Yeah. We, we can play well, Wheel of Fortune right now. Exactly. Just you figure out. Exactly. What's it going to be? <laughs> it's you, be it's Vanna. a slogan. Do Vanna. Oh, be Vanna. But your mother wanted to do it, though, right? She wanted to do it, yeah. yeah. I think yeah, that's yeah, great. Bless her. Now, see, my mother uses that word all the time. Maybe that's why. <laughs> now, that appetizer that you had, yeah. the airline tomato, what was that? That looked fabulous. I tell you, it was great. And he had, it was like a cheddar cheese basket. And what's, what's fascinating is you and I spoke to Gustav not too long ago. He remembered exactly what he cooked he for that. He did. Yes, he did. Oh, my God. It looks great. And it was fabulous. So take a look at this. Gustav! Gustav! More! I don't know what you're cooking back there. And this is our appetizer here. We have a Parmesan basket filled with heirloom tomatoes, fresh mozzarella, a little bit of uh, organic greens. We have, uh, we finish it, a uh, little touch of uh, salt. A twist of pepper. And this basket looks really intriguing, but it's very, very simple to make. It's very much like a little pancake. We uh, take grated Parmesan, place them in, the, in a nonstick pan, at low heat and just brown it and, and turn, it, uh, turn it over and that's it, it's complete. What's the difference between that and acting? Uh, with acting, you know what? Uh, when, you, when you get a taste of directing, you realize how easier it is just to act. And that's just the truth because you have everything to worry about when you're directing. And it's your as party. an actor, your job is to, what do I want? How do I get it? Who's in my way? It's all about me, 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 me. Really? See, that's why I don't have right? a series, because no, I, I mean, haven't asked those three questions. Come on, yes, you... Excuse the interruption. <gasps> oh, there he is. Are you Gustav. kidding me? This is a Parmesan basket with heirloom tomatoes, fresh mozzarella. Very nice. Little organic Are greens. Are you single? Oh. No, he's got a new no, wife, no, as a matter no, of fact. No. Thank you. An absolutely gorgeous asking. wife. What and you can It's really easy. This is, this is just Parmesan. Too. All you do, you take a nonstick pan, medium heat, very much like you make a, make a crepe, Sprinkle the uh, grated parmesan in a pan. It takes just 30 seconds. Oh 
my Take it out and you can mold it. You can make it make it steeper. You just put it over a little a cup and that's it, Brian. It won't turn out this way. Yeah. No, but this is it is really but it smells incredible. So what am I smelling? Am I smelling the the basket? Basket, yes. Oh my but I think, uh, is it rude to put my nose in this? Heck no. This is a good stuff. No, I don't so want you want to take a bar pepper. class, though, with Rami? Uh, no, come on. Well, smell yes. It. Yes, <laughs> you might have to. But. Smell it. <laughs> <laughs> but the, but the right thing. If you think that appetizer looks good, you won't want to miss the main course. And Brian gives his views on the Emmys. Being nominated to be invited to the prom. When Gustav and Friends continues. I think it's so fascinating in this next segment when you guys are talking and and Brian is sitting there talking about wanting to do Broadway and his dreams and fantasies of that and then you know as we know it all came to fruition behind closed doors yes yeah, like oh. when she gets behind closed doors you, oh that's right yeah that's when, right. She, gets when she gets behind closed doors who yeah. sings do you sing i i i, I you actually have pretty good singing voice I, thank you i yeah. kind of I like to. I have this fantasy of doing Broadway at some point. So prior to Malcolm in the Middle, any singing jobs? I, yes, I did do, uh, you know, summer stock uh -huh, and, it's, what? you know, professional, albeit it was a, maybe a $15 a day performance sure, sure. check. Hey. Give us your best one. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't have to sing if you don't want. I, well, I was in the chorus of, um, of Damn Yankees. <laughs> And did you play Lola? No, no, the <laughs> chorus. Actually. I tried out for Lola. They didn't. They didn't give it to me. Um, and uh, and uh, funny thing happened on the way to the forum mm -hmm. and other things like I, I, I think it's it's it scares me though a little bit. It's what of, of of Broadway or singing? Being up there and singing and and it scares me a little bit. It's foreign to me and but I have this secret desire to want to do it at some point. Do you play an instrument? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> But that I'm, is the interna international sign for deplaning instruments. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Wow, I'm, where were you raised, really? <laughs> I was raised in L.A. Yeah, well, don't you know? I, I knew. That's well, that's why I knew that. You could have just done that and not yeah. spoken, and, and I would have known that. Seamwork. <laughs> I'm going to start with the risotto first. It takes a little longer to cook than the sea bass. Two tablespoons of olive oil. I put a tiny little bit of butter in to start with. The uh, olive oil and butter. When you add the two of them together, it, it uh, takes a little longer with the burning point. I add a little bit of garlic, one glove of garlic, one tablespoon of uh, chopped shallots. I'm going to add my rock shrimp, which are fabulous fresh rock shrimp we just received from the Gulf. The corn, which we roasted to give it a little bit of a, a nutty taste. We have a wonderful fresh piece of sea bass here. I'm going to season it a little bit with fresh pepper, a little bit of uh, salt. I love uh, kosher salt or sea salt uh, for my fish. I dip it just a little bit in, in flour, regular, regular cake flour. And it gives us a nice, it sears the um, it sears the, the fillets nicely. It gives us a wonderful color. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, olive oil to my pan, two tablespoons. Again, you always have to think a tablespoon of, uh, of fat of any kind is 100 calories. So uh, if you can do with just one or two tablespoonful, it cuts uh, the calories quite a bit. You always have to pan hot. You're going to you do a little bit uh, of, of your, your flour and you see you can see it is hot when the uh, when the uh, you see some little swirls forming in there here we go this dish is going to take about uh, three minutes on each side and I want to give it a nice color on uh, on both sides first on one side first before I'm going to turn it over oh, where, where are we the, the, yes. night, the, night, the night of the Emmys yeah. You didn't win the Emmy. This no. is your second or third nomination. Yeah. One of the funniest impersonations of Brad Garrett when on the Emmy was that was just Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Were you really upset? I mean No, I'm No. Heart of hearts, how can you be upset? It's just an honor to be nominated. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. We're gonna have to carry you out, aren't we? <laughs> Oopsie. Okay. You 
you know, it's, it's like, I couldn't imagine being upset by not winning an award. Being nominated to be invited to the prom Isn't it is odd? like ridiculous. So anything that happens. But you looked fantastic. Did we? Very handsome. And you Why and not? Jane, by the way, looked, it, her earrings were stunning. Earrings, yeah, she it does. It was extraordinary. She does, that is she does international, international sign earrings, for earrings. This is for playing an instrument. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you some yeah. other signs I know. <laughs> yes. But, but they're not internationally known. Not yet. You'll take it there. Oh, yes, but not I yet. will. Um, yeah, it was just fun. It was great. And I, I'm, but isn't I'm it so weird? fortunate to I mean, be I mean, nominated. Yeah, well, just the whole award thing. I mean, how do you, it, it's just, I, I assume you voted for yourself. I did. I, Which you should have. Well, only because I slept with myself. Then I got the really? nod. Really? And? Yes. Are I was good? I was a little disappointed. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, I want to bump that up a notch next year. Oh, I can hear him cooking in the back. Can you hear yeah, that? He's got the yeah. sizzle going. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's time to turn it over. I, you always want to make sure it's nice. And when you turn something over, you turn it away from you. Otherwise, you splash it on you. Well, that is a wrap on our reminiscing show, <laughs> but a good one it was. Wow, what fun. It was, it was a fun look back and uh, just not only seeing Brian uh, and Romy as well, but uh, um, knowing that it, it, it did lead to, to us doing Undercover Jet Setter and it also made me realize what a horrible talk show host I am and that I should <laughs> never be a talk show host. I should be doing this. This is the show I should be doing. This yes, is it. well, so, you're perfect as an undercover jet setter. That's exactly what we do here. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you enjoyed that look back and um, hopefully you'll be looking back at these shows that we're doing in 15 years as well. <laughs> that's right. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers.